When journalist John Pilger asked Julian Assange why he started WikiLeaks, he answered, transparency and accountability are moral issues that must be the essence of public life and journalism. Pilger recounts in a recent article in Consortium News that Julian Assange believes that journalists are agents for the people, not for those in power. This means that press freedoms includes knowing when a powerful mascot of a political party has been lying to us. And that's what Julian Assange has done with WikiLeaks. He's revealed some of the most heinous crimes of the elites. And his challenge of the elites has made him a target and hence is now on a show trial that has moved from the UK to the United States because nobody is better at violating the Constitution than America, right? USA, USA, USA. This trial is about making Julian Assange an example of what happens when you shine, shed a light on the ugliness of the Hollywood for ugly people and also the Hollywood of, for Hollywood people. I mean, at this point, there is mounting evidence that proves that this trial should have been a mistrial to begin with. A private Spanish security firm named UC Global was hired to protect the Ecuadorian embassy when Assange was in asylum there. It turned out that David Morales, the head of UC Global, was working with the CIA to spy on Assange including the times when he met with his lawyer. Furthermore, you can't put a journalist on trial for being a journalist, right? That's like firing Johnny Carson for being too funny. And that's what this has come down to, the definition of a journalist. In my opinion, th the job of a journalist is to shine a light on what is happening in the world to help the average citizen make sense of it all. There are journalists that do that, and they talk to people and experts, politicians, and they get the scoop and they reveal the story to the people. And sometimes they got help from sources, anonymous or otherwise. In today's society, there aren't too many people that are actually doing this. And some of the top journalism and news organizations like CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News are owned by advertisers and corporations. That means if they want to talk about corporate malfeasance or American war crimes, they lose ad dollars. And this means that large networks like these news organizations aren't agents for the people, but rather a mouthpiece for power. They have become and continue to be the propaganda wing of the American war economy. Julian Assange published and revealed the crimes that these other news organizations wouldn't even go near. You know, because Raytheon has them by their very shaved balls. Instead of our government calling to investigate the killing of civilians and two routers journalists in Afghanistan by the American military, they chastised, smeared, and attacked the man that revealed the crime. They are literally trying to kill the messenger. That's like a principal of a school finding evidence of bullying and then giving the nerdy kid a swirly. The term that these corporate news whores, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm refusing to call them journalists at this point, right? The term that these corporate news whores have used for Assange is a hacker. And this is a bipartisan stance. Republicans call him a hacker to sound like they know what's happening with computers and the interwebs, right? According to Republicans, oh yeah, we'll Facebook them. Okay, we'll, we'll Facebook the crap out of Assange. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they think that that's a coy way of saying waterboarding. And Democrats call him a hacker because they claim he hacked into the DNC and stole Hillary Clinton's emails, despite there being no proof of the sort. It was a leak, similar to what happens to most elderly Congress people at night. It was a leak. Former NSA cryptographer and technical director at the NSA and current NSA whistleblower Bill Binney says it's obvious that this was a leak. In a recent Sputnik News interview, he outlines the files published on WikiLeaks were from a file allocation table or FAT. This means that it had to be removed from a server, put onto a disk, transported to WikiLeaks, and then delivered to them to be published. And 
that is determined by the date and timestamps used on the files. Now, right now, uh, there's a lot of Republican Congress people that are probably logging onto their AOL accounts to look up a lot of what I said, whether it's true or not. And the Democrats are trying to figure out if they can cancel me for fat shaming or something. Now, this proves that WikiLeaks and Julian Assange didn't hack into the servers, but rather published the information that they got from a source within the DNC, which would make them, everyone together, publishers. That's right, publishers, everybody. Great job. P is for publisher. Now, I think this is far more than enough proof that then we need to end the show trial but just in case it's not, because life is in a procedural drama, let's look at what Sean Hendry said. Right, Sean Hendry is the CEO of the cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike that was hired by the DNC. He said during a congressional hearing that there was evidence that these files were exfiltrated, but they never saw the exfiltrated data. But look, this is good for the Democrats, because if Assange is made an example of, then they get to keep up their pattern of blaming everyone else for their loss in 2016. This is not the party of the people. The party of the people would not be attacking an agent of the people. Look, at this point, if you're against Julian Assange, then it really sounds like you're against press freedoms and for election fraud and war crimes and letting the CIA watch you masturbate. Okay, look, I'm not king shaming anyone here, but you should choose to let the CIA watch you masturbate. They, they shouldn't just do it to everybody regardless. Julian Assange is without a doubt a journalist, a publisher, and an agent for the people. Look, as an artist that believes that the role of art is to speak truth to power, knowing that Assange feels this way about journal journalism means a lot to me. I can also empathize with the fact that his peers keep attacking him, right? Political comedians face the same challenge in terms of the attack, right? The amount of comedians that talk about the mundane that come after comedians like me far outweighs comedians that speak truth to power. The same goes for journalism. Journalism should speak truth to power. And we need more journalists like Julian Assange and less unconstitutional extradition trials. That has been your dispatch for this week. I know it's a little bit shorter of a dispatch, uh, which is uh, which is okay. Sometimes sometimes I got to write a shorter piece here and there. I have some pretty awesome new announcements right now. This is being recorded at the Rivers Edge Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at the heart of Millvale. Uh, very excited to be recording from the Rivers Edge uh, Studios. They they are a radio network an independent radio network uh, that features uh, local Pittsburgh area bands, and you can check them out on their 24-hour music station on the TuneIn app. Just look up The River's Edge on the TuneIn app and listen to some awesome, rad Pittsburgh local music. I'm very excited to be in the studio. Um, so the show is probably gonna go through some upgrades uh, the, the, the aesthetics of the show will probably change. The content is going to stay the same. My face is probably going to stay the same. Uh, but the look and feel of the show uh, will, will be different. And, uh, and hopefully it'll sound a little bit different. It'll sound a little bit uh, more professional and, and give this thing a little bit more quality. Uh, I'll be recording episodes of Taboo Table Talk, The Dispatches here, as well as the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which are moving to a, a bit of a new schedule. We're doing three shows every single month uh, on three Fridays, still at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. So the next one is tomorrow, September 11th, and then on September 18th, September 25th, October 9th, October 16th, and October 23rd. They'll be recorded right here in the River's Edge studio. Very excited. Uh, so if you haven't gotten your tickets for these shows, I highly recommend that you do. It's a new show 
every single week, new material, new, new sociopolitical topic. I know some of you guys have uh, seen these shows before, but for those that haven't, uh, I hope you come join us. It's a really fun time. It's all done virtually over Zoom. It's a, 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 a multi-platform uh, uh, show. Uh, with visuals and videos and commentary and comedy, and most importantly, comedy. So uh, grab your tickets, come hang out with me September 11th, September 18th, September 25th, October 9th, October 16th, and October 23rd. Tickets are available right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Grab those tickets and come hang out. Uh, and that website is also your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. So if you want to listen to past episodes of this show, uh, my uh, other podcast, Forkful of Noodles, uh, where I cover sociopolitical topics, uh, and they are essentially the, the, the episodic versions of uh, the Citizen Revolution. Uh, and uh, you can also check out my stand-up comedy albums there. And you can make a donation right on my website if you have the means to and if uh, you really enjoy this show. Uh, you can make a donation or become a sustaining member. Uh, why would you want to become a sustaining member? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you can become a sustaining member and you get free tickets to the Citizen Revolution shows. You get additional stand-up comedy and storytelling content that nobody else gets. Uh, you get early access to the longer full episodes of Forkful of Noodles before anybody else, um, and some bonus stuff sometimes. You know, I, I, I might be sending some uh, some cool uh, cool art, some cool posters or postcards or something along those lines to the people that uh, have uh, become uh, sustaining members. That might be coming up. I'm 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 trying to figure that out uh, as we speak. So uh, lots of fun reasons. Once again, go to my website krishmohanhaha.com that's k-r-i-s-h-m-o-h-a-n-h-a-h-a.com i hope to see you guys at these live virtual comedy shows i hope to see you guys in the comment section i hope to see you guys on the social medias if that's a way that you like to communicate uh, but uh, more, most importantly, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you subscribe and become a regular listener. If you're not already a regular listener, and if you are a regular listener, I hope you continue to be a regular listener. I very much appreciate all the people that do listen to this podcast, do share this podcast, and have become sustaining members or made uh, some kind of donation. It, it, it really means a lot, and it really helps me uh, continue to do the show and improve the quality and quantity of the, uh, the content and material that I'm putting out there. 